the circumcenter. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to find the circumcenter, which is the intersection point of the three perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a triangle. The circumcenter is the center of a circle that passes through all the vertices of a triangle. So that's kind of neat if you're trying to find something that's um, equidistant from each of the three vertices. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do two different examples um, because one in one the circumcenter is inside the triangle and one it's outside the triangle. So I just want to make sure that you understood that it could be in either location. The other thing we're going to be looking at after circumcenter is the orthocenter and the centroid. So you should be able to find each of those three points and they all have different meanings. And so I've decided to do them as three separate lessons. So the first one we're going to do here is triangle DEF, which I have drawn on the, um, on the grid here. Always a good idea to get yourself a little piece of graph paper because then you can kind of double check your solution, right? You can at least see if it makes sense. So I've plotted these points here. I'm just going to join them now and um, then we'll go about how to find the perpendicular bisector. So when you're trying to find these different types of lines, just think about what they, they say, what they're called, right? A perpendicular, perpendicular bisector. So you know that means it's going to have to divide your line segment in two parts and be perpendicular to it. <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm going to do it in pencil this time because you really should be using a, a pencil when you do your math. So I have these three vertices and I'm trying to find the circumcenter. So that's the very center of a circle and you can think about it kind of like if you were to draw a circle that included all of these three points. So it has to be, you know, go nice and round. Um, I don't have a compass. I wish I did. And I only have those little circle diagrams that don't go big enough to cover these three points. But if you do have a compass when you're finished and have found that circumcenter, you should be able to find the distance between the circumcenter and one point and make a nice circle all around it. It's kind of a cool thing. Okay, so we want to find two equations of a perpendicular bisector. So we want to find the perpendicular bisector. We're going to pick um, EF and the perpendicular bisector of DF. It doesn't matter they, if you find all three, they all go through the same point, but you only need two to find the point of intersection. So let's start by finding the midpoint. So remember how to find the midpoint the midpoint of EF. So I put a capital M, I put brackets because it's a coordinate. So I add my X's up, so minus 6 plus minus 2, divide by 2, and I add the Y's together, 4 minus 4 divided by 2, well that's a nice one, and so that's going to give me minus 4 and 0. That looks pretty good. There it is right there. So we'll get some more color out here and we'll make a nice blue dot right there. Okay, and we're going to be doing two because we want to find the perpendicular bisector of DF. So let's do the same type of work so our brains are on the same page. The midpoint of DF. So I'm going to add the X's together, minus 2 plus 4 over 2 and minus 4 plus 2 over 2. It's kind of the same, wasn't it? Different signs, though. So that's going to be positive 2 divided by 2 is 1. And this is going to be negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So the point negative 1, 1 and negative 1 will be the midpoint. Okay, so now I need to find the slopes because I want to find the negative reciprocal so I can find the line. Right? So I want to find the slope. So I'm going to use my little m with a bit of a tail on it. So the slope of EF is going to be rise over run. So subtract the y's, subtract the x's. So 4 minus minus 4 
Make sure you do the minus minuses and don't say, oh yeah, that's zero. Four minus minus four is not zero. Four minus minus four and minus six minus minus two. Okay, so four minus minus four, that's going to be eight. And six minus minus two is minus six plus two is minus four. So that gives me a slope of minus two. So the negative reciprocal, which is going to be the slope of my perpendicular bisector, so is a negative, so change the sign. Two goes, negative two goes to two, and the reciprocal of two is one half. So that means that the slope of my line that's going to be perpendicular here, it's always a tricky trying to get it exactly. I should get out a protractor. I want it to be really exact. If I find perpendicular to there, yeah, it's about where it was. Okay, so let's just draw a line like that. Now you might be off a little bit, but don't worry about it. Um, important that we label this point though. The midpoint of EF was four zero because remember, sorry, minus four and zero. We need to use this point because it is on the line. Right, so I'm going to use this point and this slope. So I have a slope of one over two. That makes sense. Up one over two. Up one over two. I always kind of double check things. Okay, so we can finish this off. Let's find the um, the equation of this line. So I'm going to use y equals m x plus b. I'm going to use my y coordinate here, which is zero. My slope, which is one half. The x coordinate is minus 4 plus b. So this is um, minus 4 divided by 2 is minus 2. I bring it to the other side to solve for b, and I get b equals 2. So that means the equation of the perpendicular bisector here is going to be y equals, so we're using 1 half, 1 half x plus 2. Right off the page. Yeah, a little bit. Let's move it up. 1 half x plus 2. That's this line here. y equals 1 half x plus 2. So it should have gone through this point here. It's a little bit off from my drawing. Okay, so that's one line. Now let's go back over here and find this one. So I need the slope of df or fd. So I'm going to say df just to keep the letters in the same order. And I'm doing rise over run. So 2 minus minus 4, 2 minus minus 4 over 4 minus minus 2. Watch those minus minuses. So 2 plus 4 is 6, and 4 plus 2 is 6, and that gives me a slope of 1. Don't forget, now we have to find the negative reciprocal. So the negative reciprocal of 1 is minus 1. What was the coordinates here? This was 1 and minus 1. So that's going to be my x, my y, my slope. So I plug that into y equals mx plus b. My y is negative 1. My slope was negative 1. My x is 1 plus b. Lots of x's and 1's and 1's. So this becomes minus 1. So I have minus 1 equals minus 1 plus b. I bring the 1 over here, and I'm going to get b is equal to 0. Okay, so what's the equation of my line then? So y equals negative x plus 0. Right? That was my slope. So now I need to find um, the intersection point. So let's draw this on here, a nice perpendicular line. Uh, Maybe about there. Okay, so I'll put this on here. And this is going to be y equals negative x. Okay, so the intersection point is right here. That's going to be the center of my circle. Let's see if I have, you know, my, my circle thing, my circle thing is not big enough. But we'll put it over top and just see if we can kind of get an idea of where it would be. So... If we do this, that's going to be the center 
So if I could make a bigger circle, you can see as I go out here, it's hard to make, hard to make it without a, a pro, uh, not a protractor, but a compass. So this is my center. Okay, but what is it? I have two equations and I want to solve for x and y. So if y equals negative x, then I can solve for x by putting in negative x here. So y is this and y is that, so this is that, right? You can say that in your head. Negative x equals 1 half x plus 2. So if I subtract it on this side, that's going to be minus, this is 1 over, or 2 over 2 minus 1 more is minus 3 over 2x is equal to 2. And what's x going to be equal to? So I invert and multiply. So I'm going to multiply this side by minus 2 over 3. That's going to make this 1. I multiplied this side by minus 2 over 3. And I would get x is equal to minus 4 thirds. Okay, so if x is minus 4 thirds, if x equals minus 4 thirds, then y is equal to negative negative 4 thirds. I'm just using this equation here to solve for my y, and I get y is 4 thirds. And therefore, now I have my conclusion. Therefore, the circumcenter, circumcenter is negative 4 thirds and 4 thirds. Okay, let's check that on our diagram here. So minus 4 thirds is 1 and 1 third. Oh, that looks pretty close, doesn't it? So that's the point right here. And it's going to be the same distance from this point to here. Because remember, this would be like a radius now, right? So these lines should all be the very same length. Okay, so that's the first one. And I'm going to do a second one. You might want to write down the equation and try it. And then come back and pick it up with me. So it says triangle ABC has coordinates A4, 12, B14, 16, and C6, minus 6 and 2. So this one I wanted to do because it has an, a circumcenter that is outside. And I'll show you why in a second here. Okay, so we join them up. We're going to find the midpoints. And then we're going to find the perpendicular bisectors and find where they intersect. So this is a pretty lengthy question. I'm not sure. Um, I think maybe once I asked for this on a test, it was it's a lot of a long a long calculation, right? It takes a lot of time. Okay, so let's start. Um, which ones we want to do here? Let's find the midpoint of AC. Find this one here. So we'll go. Midpoint AC, capital M, okay, we add the X's up, minus 6 plus 4 over 2, and the Y's is going to be 2 plus 12 over 2. And that's going to give me minus 2 over 2 is minus 1, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. So minus 1 and 7 right here, there's my midpoint. And let's do the midpoint of CB. And remember, it doesn't matter which two you choose. Um, I think maybe I'll do that one just over here. So we'll do midpoint of CB or BC. We'll say CB. Okay, so I add those up. Minus 6 plus 14 divided by 2. That's going to be the X coordinate. And 2 plus 6 over 2, that's going to be the y coordinate. So minus 6 plus 14 is 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. 6 and 2 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay, so I've got the midpoints. What do we have to do next? I don't hear you yelling at me, so I'll tell you. It's the slope, right? Oh, let's put that one on here. 4, 4. So this is 4, 4, and this was minus 1 and 7. 
And you could label those with different letters. So A, B, C, we'll call this one D and this one E or something like that. And now I'm going to find the equation of the lines first by finding the negative reciprocal because we're finding a perpendicular bisector. So I need to know the slope, the slope of AC. Okay, so rise over run, y's, so 12 minus 2, that's the rise, 12 minus 2, and 4 minus minus 6 in the denominator. So that gives me 10 over 4 minus minus 6 is 4 plus 6 is 10. So that gives me a slope of 1. That looks like a 16. Okay, the slope is 1. So the negative reciprocal is negative 1. Remember, they multiply together to give you negative 1 if you can't. Well, this is always 1. 1 can be 1 over 1, right? I flip it, becomes 1 over 1, but negative. So now I have the negative reciprocal of that one. Um, let's do the negative reciprocal of this one too. Negative the slope of CB first. So C to B. Be really careful. I like kind of maybe point at them when you do it. So that gives me 6. That's the Y's over the 1, right? 6 minus 2. The Y's on the top. And 14 minus minus 6. Always write a bracket for your minus minuses. So that's going to give me 4 over 20, which is 1 over 5. So the negative reciprocal is minus 5. So that's the slope I want to use. And let's draw those perpendicular bisectors on here. So we can get an idea. So I want it to be a nice 90 degree angle here. And I would say it's about like this. And again, unless you actually put the slope on it, you're going to be, you might be off a little bit. Okay, so this is one, this is why I wanted to show you this one because it looks kind of weird. Because look where the circumcenter is going to be down here somewhere. Right about here. So if you think about it, in order for me to go through all of these points, I would have to do something like this with my circle. Right? That's kind of a rough, a rough circle. But now you can see that the distance from here to here, let me see if it works nicely with my ruler. The distance from here, no, oh, go zero. Zero to here is three and three little ticks. And this one was three and one. Oh, I'm off a little bit. And three and a little bit more. So my drawing's not perfect, probably because my right angles are not perfectly right. But this is the point I'm looking for right here. Okay, I need the equation of this line though. So I have a slope of negative one. That was for this line AC. My point, so I'm using, using D, which is minus 1 and 7, and plugging it into Y equals MX plus B. I'm going to find my line, the equation of my line. So Y is 7. The slope is minus 1. The X value was one, uh, minus 1. And I want to know what B is. So this gives me 2, so that means B is going to be equal to 5. Does that make sense? Mm -mm -mm. I get minus 1 and 7. 7, that's minus 1. Positive 1 and B is 6. Okay, there we go. Because we're this is positive, this is another one of these. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So this was really 7 equals 1 plus b, so b is equal to 6. So my equation is y equals negative x plus 6. Okay, so that's this line here, y equals negative x plus 6. Look, it goes through the y-intercept to 6, yay! That's how you can also check too, right? Okay, so with this line here, my negative reciprocal was minus 5, and the point that we're using is 4, 4, 
right here. That's a point on the line so I can use it. You can't use a vertex because it doesn't go through. It's not a median here. These are perpendicular bisectors. Okay, so I'm going to use the point 4, 4 in my equation. And I'm going to say y equals mx plus b. You should know that by heart from now, from now and forever. Point, point 4, so that means y is 4. My slope is minus 5. My x is also 4. And I'm solving for b. So 4 equals minus 20 plus b. I bring this to the other side and I get b is equal to 24. So what's my equation? y equals my slope minus 5, the x coordinate, and I found the b. Remember that when you find equation of a line, it has to have um, the other uh, coordinates, x and y in it. And I just looked over here and I wrote minus x plus b. That was supposed to be a 6. Let's fix that. Okay, so now I have these two equations and I want to find their point of intersection on the page. My goodness, sometimes I get carried away. Okay, so let's find the point of intersection of these two lines. And we're going to do that just by setting them equal to each other. So we had y equals minus 5x plus 24 and y equals minus x plus 6. So because it says y is equal to this and y equals that, I can set these equal to each other. Just like if I told you that 4 was equal to 3 plus 1 and 4 was equal to 2 plus 2, you would tell me that 3 plus 1 is equal to 2 plus 2, right? Yay! Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here. That's called comparison. Now you could use elimination. It would be a little bit more work especially when this is all set up so nicely like this. Okay, so let's bring the x's to one side. So I'm going to add 1x to here to move it. So that's going to be minus 4x equals, this is plus 6, and I'm going to subtract 24. 6 minus 24 is minus 18. And I'm going to divide by minus 4 to get my x. So x is equal to... Minus 18 over 4, reduce your fraction, so I get minus 9 over 2. So if um, x is equal to minus 9 over 2, I need to find y. So I'm going to use this little equation here to solve for my y. So therefore, y equals minus minus 9 halves plus 6. Minus minus 9 halves, that's plus 9 halves. So 9 halves plus, how many halves is 6? 12, right? Times 2. 12 over 2. And that's going to give me, uh, just a minute, I had x, negative x plus 6. Negative x plus 6, negative, negative. That's plus 21 over 2. That's not right. I'm going to do wrong here. Oh, I know, right here. There was a negative here. I divided by negative 4 on both sides. That made this positive. So that meant minus 9 halves plus 12 halves, and that's 3 halves. Okay, therefore, the circumcenter, we've got it all figured out now. You can finally breathe a sigh of relief, is, da da da, our x was 9 halves and our y was 3 halves. Okay, let's look at our diagram. So that's 4 and a half and 1 and a half. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half, and 1 and a half. Whoop, that's where I'm a little bit high, right? So that should have been 1 and a half. Should have been more like here. So that's what happens when your lines are not quite perpendicular, like that one. Okay, so that's how you do it. And of course, you can always double check your solution by looking at your drawing and um, maybe adjusting your... Obviously, that's not perpendicular at all, is it? It should have been more like this to be perpendicular. Oh, there we go. See, now it's right through that point. 
That's how you fix things in math. And again, that means that the distance from here to this vertice or this one to this and this center, this is my center of my big circle, can go out to here. Now, the kind of word problems that you're going to have with this would be like, you know, you have three points in a parking lot and they want you to put the light where it's going to be right in the middle to light everything equally. And that's when you would want to find a circumcenter. Okay, so that's your circumcenter lesson. I promise I'll do the centroid and the orthocenter as well so that you have all three. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe.